Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to talk about the something important about the Spring Boot actuator. So if you go to the Spring Initializer website and go to the switch to the full version and come, you have a different categories, right? For the starter, different kind of a starter project, right? You have a core, wave, uh, SQL, bunch of things you have. If you come down to the bottom, then if you come down, come down to the bottom, then you have an option is called Ops, and here you can see the actuator. So basically, I'm talking about this, and they have given the nice explanation. Production ready features to help you monitor and manage your application, right? So while creating the project, if you select this option, then actuator related uh, dependency will be added in your form.xml right so this primarily we are going to talk about the actuator but uh, uh, while demoing this actuator one of the more things i'm going to select like something is called dev tools and uh, you can see the explanation is spring boot development tool so basically when you add this dependency in your class path and if you make any change in your source code in your project then you don't really need to start the server so server will be started automatically to take the new effect right whatever changes you do that will be effective right so usually what happens when you work on the energy web application then basically if you make any changes in your source code then usually you restart the server so basically if you don't want to restart the server then you need to add this dependency in your form.xml and once you add this dependency in your form.xml then if you make any change in your source code then to, uh, then your tomcat or whatever jt server you, you are using that will be restarted automatically and this is recommended for the only development purpose so make sure that if you deploy this uh, your project in uh, prod then you will have to disable this right so to make this demo actuator demo i have just make a, another copy of my existing project which we had seen in our uh, past demo and that was uh, ticket booking rest spring boot data jpa mysql app so here if you look into the we have a, a bootstrap class and uh, uh, we are here we have a service class right basically service uh, sorry before that we have a controller class basically and we had seen in past video how to perform the CRUD operation in RESTful Web Service Vault, right? So that is the project which I have taken uh, to show you how actuator works, right? And from uh, controller, we are basically making call to the service layer, right? And service makes call to the DAW layer, right? So basically a CRUD operation using RESTful Web Services. But uh, even though you, if you do not understand this code, uh, that's uh, well and good, that's well, uh, but uh, here basically we will mainly focus on the uh, actuator uh, concept right so let's try to understand what is basically actuator right so a spring boot actuator is a sub project of a spring boot it provides several production grade services to your application out of the box once actuator is configured in your uh, a spring boot application you can interact and monitor your application by invoking different http endpoint and uh, endpoints exposed by the spring boot actuator such as application health uh, bin details version details configuration logger diesel details etc so if you want to see the all endpoints which is which is provided by the spring boot and uh, basically to access these endpoints you don't need to write any kind of code so if you go to the spring boot website and they have listed all all existing uh, endpoints over here so once you add the uh, actuator uh, dependency in your class path then you will be able to access all these 16 endpoints and if you are working with a spring mbc right if you are working with a spring mbc then you will have extra four endpoints right so basically how to add actuator in our project 
so if you go to the com then here you can see i have already added uh, dependency for the uh, dev tools so if i make any change in this project then i don't need to really restart my server right let's uh, first of all test uh, dev tools is working fine or not so what i'll do i'll uh, run this project as a, a spring boot app and let's see server starts or no by default server starts on 8080 port right so as you know that uh, tomcat server comes with the embedded in a spring boot right application uh, if you have selected a web if you have added a uh, web starter project dependency then you can see my tomcat is currently running on 8080 port let's say i want to change this port number default port number then you will have to go to the your uh, application uh, dot properties and here you have a property is called server uh, dot port and that i'm going to there i'm going to assign the new port 9090 and once you save then uh, once you save then see uh, automatically server has restarted and you can see now our application is running on uh, 9090 port that means uh, dev tools is working perfectly fine right so you don't need to really restart the server if you make any change in your application now second thing we are going to add a uh, actuator dependency in our uh, project right so how to add actuator dependency so you have to give the group id in dependencies uh within the dependency tag dependencies tag you have a lot of dependency right one of the dependency is called a spring boot starter actuator so here you will have to see the, give the actuator so group id arc dot spring framework dot boot and artifact id spring hyphen boot hyphen starter dot actuator and that's it we have done we have added uh, actuator in our existing form dot xml right so once you have added this actuator dependency in our class path then you'll be ac access uh, you'll be access to all these uh, uh, endpoints uh, and if you are using uh, a spring mbc along with a spring board then you will have an extra four uh, endpoints right so how to test this uh, this uh, basically this endpoints right so a spring boot includes a number of uh, built in endpoints and you can also add your own or even configure existing endpoints to be exposed on any custom endpoints of your choice it is obvious that all the endpoints cannot be exposed publicly considering that there are many sensitive endpoints like bins you have a you can see like bins env a lot of you have a 60 among the 16 uh, endpoints uh, health and info these are not the sensitive endpoints but rest of the endpoints are sensitive what do you mean by sensitive sensitive means you need to uh, provide the username and password to access uh, these endpoints for security reason right so rest of the endpoints except from health and info they made sensitive right so so as i said two endpoints health and info is not sensitive so let's try to access uh, info and help from the browser right so here our application is up and running right and currently our application is running on uh, so because of some reason application has failed so what i'll do i'll start my application again and let's try to access two endpoints info as well as help from browser now you can see our application is running 9090 port and if you go to the uh, here i have installed uh, postman so here you will have to write http colon slash slash uh, localhost 9090 slash health and if you click on the send then 
we are getting the response as a status as up right so this is accessible now let's try to access the info if you click on send then info, info is coming with the empty json right so there is no uh, information available for the info that's why that is coming with the uh, empty json now if you apart from these two uh, endpoint if you try to access like bins then let's see what response we get we get some error message saying that unauthorized right and uh, saying that message full authentication is required to access this resource right and path is slash bins and they are given the status code HTTP status code and timestamp as well right so if you uh, try to access even env then you get the almost similar message right so as i said there are there are 16 uh there are 16 plus 4 right you have a uh, around 20 endpoints which is exposed by the spring boot uh, uh, to monitor your application right uh, but uh, these uh, endpoints are most of the endpoints are secured or sensitive right except uh, health and info health and info is uh, accessible for you but rest of the endpoints are non not accessible for you right so so for demo purpose what i'll do uh, i'll go to the here and here what i'll do i'll disable this sensitivity so we have a tag is called management management dot security dot enabled and this flag i'm going to make as false once you make false then you'll be able to access uh, uh, all your endpoints that will not ask you for the, any kind of username or password and see we have added to dev tools in our class pass so once we made changes in our properties file then server has restarted automatically now after making this change if i try to access the env then see we are able to access the uh, this endpoint and this endpoint exposes a lot of things right uh, regarding your environment environment what is the user home a lot of things and if you come to the come so user name if you come to the bottom then one of the important things that is exposed by this endpoint is application dot properties contain so here you can see your database url username password all those stuff you have configured in the your properties.xml that is getting exposed right that's why spring boot has made this endpoint as sensitive right so you do not want to i mean uh, access this kind of uh, sensitive information by everyone right so that's why that they made by default uh, sensitive right and if you want to access any other endpoints like bins right so sorry this will be also accessible this will expose this will give you the list of all bins right which is available in your application so like ticket book, booking management app, uh, app application so this is our own bin right which we had created right uh, similarly some of the bins which is used by the uh, which is provided by spring framework those bins is also getting exposed over here and this is the controller which we have written all those stuff right so bean name alias if there is any alias name that will be what are type of a scope right bean type right with qualified package name uh, again resource dependency if this bin is dependent on other bins all those information is going getting exposed by this endpoints right so so i will encourage you to go and try to uh, try to access the rest of the endpoints as well right so in this video we have basically uh, covered the basics of actuator i'm going to cover some more things in detail about the actuator in the ne next video so uh, till that thanks for watching this video and see you next video tutorial